Hey, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. I'm going to work on a reel today that uh, I don't often see. It's a baitcaster reel. It's a larger one. This one was sent in by Ron. It's a um, Okuma cold water reel. And uh, this one's um, uh, one of many that he has, apparently. And uh, he asked me to take it apart and show him how to uh, service this so he can deal with the rest of the reels that he uh, takes fishing. So. Uh, we're going to start by removing the, the exterior parts here. This is a line counter reel. I think for the most part it seems like it's working. I didn't see anything here on a, on a quick uh, turn of events here that says that uh, there's anything wrong. This one is missing the side case here. Something's going on with that little side case flange. And I'm not sure if that's uh, even repairable there. It should be a snap ring or something. But in any case, uh, we did get a bar. There is a screw that uh, comes out here. And uh, we're going to take this apart. We'll show you, uh, if you have one of these, how to service it. If you're thinking of buying one of these, what it's made of. And uh, we'll show Ron how to do the next ones. All right, so we start by taking off that little set screw that holds a, a clamp in for the handle cap. That handle cap is a 10 millimeter nut. And as we do this, I want to start, as I have been trying to do, by thanking all of our first responders. I got a, uh, a note the other day from somebody from the uh, New York City Fire Department uh, thanking me for thanking him. <laughs> I guess that's uh, not necessary there. What you're doing is the important stuff. I'm just trying to keep people entertained during the pandemic. But uh, thank you to all of our first responders, regardless of what profession you're in, healthcare, fire, law enforcement, Certainly, anybody dealing with nursing homes, long-term care facilities, hospitals, etc. Th thank you for all you do, and thank you for all the support workers that are essential personnel that uh, keep everything else uh, going, our food supplies and, and everything. We do appreciate that. And uh, if I missed anybody, it's not by oversight. Uh, there's a lot of people trying to keep us all healthy. All right, so I took the handle off. There was a little nut there. I'm using two things here. There's a schematic available out on the web. I suggest if you uh, got this reel, go get that schematic. I haven't been inside this reel, so um, it will be interesting to see some of that. And then the other side of it is I suggest you take pictures along the way, like I'm doing here. The pictures will help to guide you when it's time to reinstall. So I'm taking off the star adjuster now. I did notice there's a click mechanism behind this. This comes off in a counterclockwise manner, and here's your click mechanism. So with these, generally, what I like to do is just kind of pile them back into the adjuster the way they came out. So there was a flat washer, and there's these two tension washers, which have to do with the sensitivity of the, uh, the piece. And then there's a click washer, and then there's a little bearing washer underneath that that uh, lines up to the cap here. And I put all of those into a parts tray. That parts tray helps me keep uh, pieces and parts uh, close at hand so that when I go to reinstall I know where they are. All right we have one screw case here, one here, and it looks like we have to take that uh, line counter mechanism piece off from the side. That's something I never enjoy doing with line counters. Uh, they tend to be plastic and be springs and they tend to break. Line counters are particularly difficult in salt water because the salt spray gets into the mechanism and that salt spray uh, becomes problematic in terms of jamming uh, the pieces. Now these screws look like they're going to be all different. So I lay them on my table just to check and see what we have here. I took the one out in the back first. And I want to get these out because I do want to make sure that they're the same length, the same threads, and so on. And my guess is that the first two are the same. So the back and the front side plate screws, that one and this one, are the same. These two up top, I'm going to believe, are smaller. And there's also a bar, bar screw. He had, uh, Ron had to reorder that. And these are particularly small. They're a little bit longer, so just make a note of that when you go to reinstall that uh, the small ones up top, there's a pair of them, and then there's a pair below, and then there is the uh, 
R screw that comes through here. All right, I think that should re allow us to remove the case. I'm not seeing anything else here. So there's probably a screw hiding under here. And what that usually means is you need to remove the side plate here. Remove the side plate here by turning up half a click. And you can pull that off. And you can pull your spool out. And not only is there one, there's two screws underneath there. So what you want to do when you find yourself in this situation, the last thing you want to do is force anything. Because if you force the, uh, the issue, so to speak, you're only going to wind up in, in a bunch of trouble. You're going to wind up cracking the case or something worse. All right, so we have two more screws that we have to identify here. And these look to be the same size screws as the two that I took out of the other part of the case there. So we'll, we'll just make a comparison there when we take these out. I already put the others in my parts tray, but that's all right. We'll grab them. And then if you can't reach them, use a, something like a pair of pliers here. Um, those pair of pliers. Looks like I didn't get that all the way. There you go. And I'm just going to grab one of those for an example. Make sure that the four of those are the same. So this should just come straight up. Famous last words. Should. Okay, so just looking inside quickly here, it looks like this uh, arm for the line counter is uh, caught behind the main gear, so you want to turn your reel over. You'll notice there's one more screw in there that's going to enable us to remove that line counter mechanism. Like I said, that always is problematic. Now we should be able to get the front of this off, and, and we can. That's a beautiful thing. We have our uh, gear sleeve that just came out of there. We have our anti-reverse bearing is sitting in the housing here and uh, we have a um, I'm not quite sure what we got here we got a little bit of a disturbance here but that probably was with me working all of those pieces but that's your, your drag stack should have the click mechanism come out next this will be our trip mechanism which will interface with the, the drag mechanism there we have two springs I'm just going to lay them on the table here for the yoke then we should be able to pull the yoke and the main gear up. And then with the rest of these, you don't need to take these parts out. There is a, uh, if you had to replace your gear shaft, there's a uh, two screws that'll do that. If you wanted to replace the housing for your uh, lever release, there's two screws here. You can check that lever release now. You're going to find that as you push down, it's going to push this piece. And as we mentioned earlier, this is your click ratchet. That'll go on here, and when you turn your, your reel, it's going to push that up. So everything here is operating fine. What I like to do is just give it a good dose of the penetrating oil as a cleaner, and then just run the uh, a Q-tip just to pick it up. This is very clean inside this reel. There really is no cleaning going on. Ron didn't mention if he was inside this or not. I'm not sure. Um, what the case is there. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't hurt to, to clean it up. Then if you have a paper towel or you just want to leave it sit there, it will eventually run off that, uh, that little bit of extra or you can just blot it out. And the whole idea with a general tune-up is to make sure that all the pieces and the parts are correct, that you uh, it's cleaned, that it's ready to go fishing again, and that uh, it's lubricated for the next season or the next part of the season, depending on how frequently you are uh, servicing this reel. All right, so I'm going to use a little bit of fishing reel grease. Now I'm using pen precision reel grease. Yeah, it's an Okuma. You could use the hot sauce and you can do other things, I guess. But uh, to me, that doesn't matter much. What does matter is that you have the um, fishing reel grease, not, uh, not something else. Check the teeth. This one's clean. I'm going to do a couple of things. Get some grease on that little pinion side, uh, the shaft, and let's get grease into the teeth. And then let's get grease onto the shoulder where your yoke is going to ride. Get all of those pieces well greased up. Now you have the yoke, and, and you may have done just what I did here. You put it down on the desk, and then you don't remember what side is what. That happens all the time. So the little 
through here is there's a ramp setting here on the teeth and that ramp is going down. Sometimes you'll notice that there's actually an indentation for your springs on the other side. And then as you do that, it's going down. The spool acceptor piece belongs inside this way. So that was a good place to take pictures if you hadn't taken pictures before because that'll show you uh, if, if you got caught there how to go ahead and, and put that back together. All right, we've got two springs that go on top of that. I always get nervous with these springs. Easy enough to do. It's easy to drop these, have them shoot, and so on. And uh, that makes it pretty darn difficult to keep the uh, reel repaired. All right, uh, click lever goes on. We just showed you how that operates. It's on a, a rectangle. You need to make sure that it seats properly on the bottom there. And we have our, uh, our little shield washer. I'm going to take a moment here to put the oil onto the spring assembly for the release. I'm going to use Real X oil here. Make sure you get it in the grooves of the trip mechanism as well. So we flushed it out with the, uh, the WD-40 or the penetrating oil or whatever we want to call it. It doesn't have to be WD-40 I'm using. And then you want to make sure that uh, you replace it with a with a substantial oil and again use a fishing reel oil. Right now I'm checking the teeth of the main gear making sure that that's right. Checking the back we got a little bit of corrosion on the back here I'm just going to use a, a steel wool pad here to, to try and clean up the pieces. Looks like we have some flaking on the uh, whatever this metal is. Clean it off make sure you, uh, you get rid of any of that. And then we can do the same thing we just did with the pinion gear. We'll get a nice amount of grease onto that so that it travels smoothly. Just like that. The main gear can get reinstalled now. I like to have that uh, pinion gear in. Then we can just slide this on. And it looks like this has already been upgraded for Carbon Tex washers. That's neat. Give this a spin at this point. Make sure everything is kind of doing what it should be doing. And then we should have a, uh, a large washer that's eared as the next step. Again, all of this kind of fell out when we, uh, we took that piece off here. So there's two slots in the main main gear you need to align these with. Just like that. And we have the third of the washers. And we have the cap washer. Now this has got a raised side on it. The raised side goes to the top. And if they're carbon tex washers, they do not require lubrication. So this essentially is the uh, the setup right now. There's another cap that goes on here. And that's going to uh, interface with your anti-reverse bearing. And then the last part here is actually this part behind this. It's hard to see. There's a little wheel here. That wheel is going to drive the, the line counter. So get some oil on that, that line counter piece there. I think everything just fell out here. So let's take a moment to, to reset, make sure that those Eared washers are in the slots, they're not. So you just need to reset that. And this is kind of odd because the, the drag washers are bigger, but there's no internal piece to that. So kind of odd, but that's okay. I've seen more odd stuff on uh, fishing reels. All right, let's come over to this one now. There's a bearing. I'm just going to set that off to the side. There's a bearing in here and some cleanup. Again, this reel is very clean, so there's not much going on with that. We want to get the bearing oiled. We want to make sure that we're clean on the anti-reverse that was working when we, we started it. And just make sure that the case overall is clean. Okay, I needed a minute in my mind's eye to see this. 
uh, because it's, it, remember when we took this off, it was just kind of jammed, not allowing us to pull the main gear off. So I just uh, took my glove off. I needed a little dexterity. Uh, first thing you need to make sure is that this click ratchet remains on the shaft properly. I've noticed that that's been slipping. And I think the best way to install this side plate is straight up so that you don't disturb the, the springs or the, um, the washers since the washers that we saw were not uh, loaded into the, um, not a full washer wrapping around the shaft, but rather they were just kind of had a big gap in it. All right, so I noticed that um, you kind of have to align this inside, sort of holding it like that in position or approximate position. Getting it set on the case there. Then bring your case over. And then you can do the final alignment because that other piece is somewhat trapped underneath, right? So get it lined up like that. Then get your first screw in so that you can hold that assembly in place. Just like that. And then get a case screw in. Now, I, before I was saying that they look like the same screws, they aren't. There's uh, These two have a thinner diameter than the other. So you want to get that one in. Then best thing to do now, I have the case screw in, I have one of the drive screws in there. Come on over to the drive and make sure that your line counter is working and you can see that it's it's working, right? It's driving the numbers. So now you know you have your line counter installed properly. So you can go to the back then and there's three screws that come in from the back to mount this. And these are going to be fun for me because I don't do well in small places with big fingers. Uh, many of you know that. But if you're patient, eventually you do get it. There's the first one. I'm going to continue to use my micro drive on that. These two screws have a, a, a wider diameter than the other one. This is the, the other small one. Let's go put that on the back here. So Ron, good luck with these. Uh, it took a little trial and error there. It took me to Take that smaller diameter one, get that over to the back side here. Okay, we'll tighten that one down. Put the second one of these long screws in on this side for the case. Have one more small one here. Where I keep the parts to these small pieces are very difficult to uh, to manage. Okay, I'm continuing with my micro drive just to get that last screw in here. Okay, so let's just finish tightening that down. Let's test one more time on that uh, line counter, make sure everything's driving the right way, which it is. That's great. And um, we can go about wrapping up the rest of the reel. So uh, before I do that, I want to make sure that I uh, service the pawl. Now there's two ways you can do that. One of them is you can pull with that case off before. You can pull these screws, get the shield off. Or you can work right underneath here. This is just a service, so it should all come together here. This is a plastic cap. Be very careful of it when you do remove it. As, uh, it tends to, to break. There's a little bit of dirt on there, so let's get that off. I'm going to put some oil in here. Also going to oil the worm gear that goes along with it. Then we can simply replace the, the cap on that. Okay, I'm going to take a break for a moment. When we come back, we'll just rebuild the rest of the outside of this. We'll service the spool and uh, we'll move on sure that that pole works nice and smooth, which it does now, and uh, we'll move on to completing this reel. 
Okay, I'm back after a short break, so let's finish this up then. So we put the side plate on, we'll leave this for a moment, and then we'll uh, go over and do the rest of this here. So the spool would be the only other thing that needs service on this reel. There's two bearings on each side, so we're going to oil those bearings. And I'm going to use that Reel X fishing reel oil. And then we can just simply move the shaft of the spool, get that spool set into the main housing. And then we have our little um, cover here. Underneath the cover there is a Teflon drive wheel here. That doesn't need to be uh, greased. It, it's been greased. So I guess we can put a little bit more in there just for fun, but it's a petrochemical product that doesn't need that greasing. All right, and then this is simply a uh, loaded into the top, mull it over, and then push it down after it sets. And then what was missing, I guess, that uh, was ordered is this um, post and, sp and spring, which locks that in place. And I just load that in like this, push in. And set that tight. And that spring, the purpose of that spring is to keep the that rod from uh, coming out. All right, on the finished side then, we're going to put the sleeve that's for the anti-reverse. And it's also the push down sleeve for the for the drag washers. And we have this thing, and it looks like it's just got little studs, so it's floating in there. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be or what, but that's definitely floating in there. Then we have the small flat uh, washer, which goes over that sleeve. And then remember I put all the things in here kind of the opposite way, so let's get those pieces and parts out. We had the click mechanism goes next. Then we had the two tension washers that put the tension or allow variability in the tension of the star adjuster. Then we had the flat washer. And then we can put our star adjuster on. You just need to make sure it's going on square. Right now it's cross-threading a little bit. And while we're at it, we can put that cap over here, which is the spool adjuster cap, before we tighten down too much and bump into the other stuff. Okay, spin that down, hold the shaft there so you can And you can tell we've, we've got that set. And we have the little spin washer that goes on top. It's going to give you the space between the adjuster and the handle. The handle comes next. The cap. And again, hand thread these. You don't want to start uh, using wrenches and cross thread them. And once they get tight, then you can use your wrench. Now, generally speaking, if you get the flat bar here loaded, uh, opposite the tie-down nut, you generally can get the, the screw hole aligned, which just happened there. And we have our tie-down screw, which is a little bit of a mess, but it should work. And then we can give it a test run. So nice reel overall. A little, little fun playing with this uh, this line counter thing, right? But every, otherwise it's running. We'll tighten this down. And it appears that this uh, adjuster holds that little thing in place, what we were talking about before. Let's pop the top there, make sure that we spin and as we let the line out. Click and we have the line counter. Okay, 
So there we go. That's the, uh, the reel that Ron sent in. It's an Okuma cold water line counter. It's a uh, little interesting tricks with getting that reel taken off and loaded again. Uh, but we worked our way through it, a little bit of intuition there. And uh, this reel is ready to go fishing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe. And if you do subscribe, please hit the notification button. That way it'll help my channel out. And you'll also get to see the videos as I post them, which I've been trying to do daily with the, uh, the pandemic here. And then finally, if, uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. I'll be happy to answer them, even if it's not on this reel. And if you have a reel that needs to be repaired or serviced, uh, like Ron did here, and you're interested in uh, having me service that by mail, well then please uh, contact me by way of the email on the business card that follows. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.